Okay, so we have 13.43. Uh, and this is a multi-part problem. Uh, probably won't be able to get it all in one video, so we'll go as far as we can. So the problem is, we're given this diagram right off the bat. We have a particle that is 0 0.5 meters away from a particle A that is 1 kilogram in mass in the y direction. And in the x direction, it is the same distance, 0 0.5 meters away from particle B, which is also 1 kilogram. But then we get a curveball. We have that it is also in some kind of middle direction, which we'll figure out later, uh, some unknown distance away from a 2 kilogram mass particle C. So, we're asked to find the for the magnitude and direction of the force that is um, uh, the resultant force of these three particles A, B, and C on our particle P. So, uh, kind of from uh, earlier ch uh, from this chapter, anyway, we know that the gravitational force in general is the gravitational constant times the mass of 1 times the mass of the second over the radius or the distance between the two of them squared. So uh, we can go ahead and find the forces that are uh, from each individual particle A, B, and C on our particle P and from that we can find the total force uh, acting on this particle. So let's just go ahead and do some labeling here so we can keep it all clear in our heads. That our first force, force 1, is the force acting on our particle P from particle A. And then our second force, force 2, is the force acting on particle P by particle B. And our third force is the force, force 3, acting on our particle P by particle C. That will kind of help us out as we structure the rest of the really long problem. So, first we can just uh, start converting our general equation into each of our individual forces and using the values for our various variables. So, we have force 1 is equal to our gravitational constant times the mass of our particle. We'll just set that as mass 1 and mass 2 um, as the mass of our particle A, B, or C. So we have mass of P times mass of A all over radius of P to A squared. So we know that our gravitational constant is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. And since uh, the mass P is 0 0.5, uh, excuse me, I didn't give that. So the mass of our particle P is 0 0.015 kilograms. Um, and the mass of our particle A is 1, so 1 times 0 0.15 is simply 0 0.015 kilograms, divided by our distance, which is 0 0.5 squared. So we can go ahead and do all this math, and that comes out to be 4.002 times 10 to the negative 12 newtons. And we write this down as j hat, just the convention for vectors, j hat is the y direction. And then we have our force 2, which is actually pretty easy because <coughs> all the variables are the same. It's the same distance away from our particle p and it's the same mass as our particle A. So we can just write that force 2 is 4.002 times 10 to the negative 12 newtons, and that is in the i hat, or the x direction. Now, uh, to find the variables for our force 3, we have to do a little bit extra, simply because we don't know this distance, but it's pretty simple to find out. We just got to draw a right triangle and use Pythagorean theorem. 
So we have this right triangle right here, and we have that our A side is 0 0.5 meters from particle P to B, and we can just kind of extrapolate this side here, side B, as 0 0.5 meters since from we can see from our diagram here that our particle C has the same vertical displacement as particle A. And then we have side C here, or, or our hypotenuse, which we know from Pythagorean theorem that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And the really nice thing about this is because we're going to be squaring this distance in our uh, force formula, we can just leave this as it is and just say that C squared is equal to 0 0.5 squared plus 0 0.5 squared, which is just 0 0.5, since 0 0.5 squared is 0 0.25. We have two of those, that's 0 0.5. So, let's dig right in. We know that the force <coughs> is going to be, uh, so let's go ahead and write our force 3 here, is equal to our gravitational constant, the 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times the mass of, well, we can go the mass of our particle P, just for continuity, 0 0.015, times the mass of particle C, which is 2, divided by 0 0.5, that's our R squared. And then that <laughs> actually comes out to be 4.002 times 10 to the negative 12 newtons. But... That is just the resultant force on the particle from the both the x and the y uh, force acting on it from this particle C. So what we need to do is to find out what those x and y components are so we can plug those in for our total force acting on the particle later. So... Let me, there you are, okay. Make some room here, and we have that the force, our uh, force three in the x direction is equal to the magnitude of the force times the cosine of our angle uh, that we learned from chapter like three. So we can just plug in the uh, 4.002 times 10 to the negative 12 times cosine in our angle here. We know that, uh, that X and Y are perpendicular. So the angle between them is 90 degrees. And we can just kind of eyeball the diagram here and see that this vector going to particle C bisects the two other vectors, X and Y. So we can just kind of assume that to be 45 degrees. Um, so that comes out to be 2, uh oh, 2.83 times 10 to the negative 12 newtons in the j hat or the uh, y direction. And then uh, we do the same thing. Force 3 in the y direction is equal to force 3 times the sine of theta. And uh, sine and cosine at 45 degrees are both root 2 over 2. So the um, uh, y component of our force is the same as the x component. So that's 2.83 times 10 to the negative 12 newtons in the i hat direction. 
or the y direction, uh, x direction, excuse me. So now we add all of our total force in the x direction is equal to, just let me look at it here. So that's going to be our force 2, because that's our x-axis there plus force 3x, which uh, we know was the 4.002 times 10 to the negative 12, plus our 2.83 times 10 to the negative 12, which comes out to be 6.83 times 10 uh, to the negative 12 newtons. And then we have the total force the y direction is actually, uh, it comes out to be the same again because you have the same variables. Um, so that is also 6.83 times 10 to the negative 12 newtons. And honestly, we could have kind of guessed uh, that these would be the same just from our diagram here because again, it's the 45 degree angle, it's equidistant from the x axis and the y axis. But that's just kind of a nice little kind of trick thing. So, now, we have that our total force is going to be equal to the square root of the forces in the x direction squared plus the forces in the y direction squared. So, we know that both of those are 6.83 times 10 to the negative 12 squared. And rather than writing that out again, we can just write a nice 2 here because you're just adding a second one. So when we do that math, our total force comes out to be 9.66 times 10 uh, to the negative 12 newtons. And that's the first part of the problem. The second part's pretty simple. We have, uh, we know from trig that the tangent of theta is equal to y over x. So to find the direction of our force here, we can just take the inverse tangent of both sides and have theta is equal to inverse tangent of y over x, which is equal to the inverse tangent of our uh, y over x components, which we know are the same, so that just becomes tangent of 1, which is 45 degrees. And that gives us the magnitude of our total force from these three particles and the direction. Yeah, 45 degrees.